Welcome to the second part of the video series on Apple ID, iCloud and iTunes. Previously we learned a little about Apple ID and how we can sync our iOS devices using iTunes. Now let us have a look at iCloud. So what is iCloud? Basically iCloud is Apple's push technology. The idea is to ensure that the data across all your devices is the same. So if you have an iPhone, an iPad, a MacBook Pro and an iMac, iCloud will ensure that the data across all these devices is the same automatically and seamlessly. Now there is often a confusion about iCloud ID as compared to an Apple ID. They are actually the same. You use the same ID to sign into iCloud services that you use to sign into your Apple ID. The credentials remain the same. You can think of iCloud ID as an Apple ID that also provides iCloud services. When you start off, you basically get free 5 GB storage available on the cloud. If you wish for additional space, you can purchase it at a monthly fee. Remember, iCloud is not a backup service. What do I mean by that? Let us say you have some contacts on your phone. iCloud ensures that the contacts are also available on your iPad, your MacBook Pro and your iMac. So if for example you do not wish to have that contact on your iMac and you go and delete it, iCloud will ensure that it is deleted across all your devices. And such information may not be easily recoverable again unless you have taken backup in some other location. So remember any change that you make on one device will be reflected across other devices. So if you expect a behavior wherein you delete data from uh, say your iMac and you expect it to remain on your iPhone then make sure that data is not being managed by iCloud because if it is Deleting it on the iMac will ensure that it's deleted on all other devices. So how do we set up iCloud on OS X? Well, you can set up iCloud on OS X using system preferences. All that you have to do is go to the iCloud preference pane within system preferences and sign in with your Apple ID or as you can call it now, your iCloud ID to make use of iCloud on OS X. From here, you can configure your account and manage services or data being pushed on the cloud from here. So let us have a look at setting up iCloud on OS X. We'll open System Preferences, go into iCloud, and now here we need to sign in with our Apple ID, also called the iCloud ID. So let us put in the details. Sign in. Okay, once you've signed in, how long it takes depends on your internet connection. But basically, once you've signed in, it will ask you what you would like to use iCloud for. So, you have the common options in the form of contacts, calendars, reminders, notes, Safari. But there's also a second option called Use Find My Mac, which is important. And we'll talk about it in a bit. For now, I will keep both the options selected and click Next. So here I get a pop-up saying enabling Find My Mac will disable it for Arun Patwaza. So I've already enabled Find My Mac using another Apple ID on a different account. So it's not letting me set it up here. I'll just hit cancel. I'll not set it up. 
It's asking me to enter my Apple ID password to set up iCloud Keychain. I will not set this up for now, so I'll hit cancel. And that's really it. Uh, it's very easy to set up iCloud. Let us see what all it has it is offering right now. So using iCloud, I have access to iCloud Drive, which allows me to manage my documents on the cloud. So if I go into options, I can control the different applications that can use my iCloud service to push data back and forth. So I have keynote numbers, pages, I have iBooks, I have QuickTime, Preview, a lot of applications. I can choose those when I want and make the changes as I wish. I even have an option for photos. So if I go into options, from here I can control how photos are managed on the cloud. And sometimes you may find that this is important because as you can see, by default you have 5 GB storage on cloud. So it's rather limited. And as many of us use the camera on the phone quite extensively, don't be surprised if you find that your iCloud storage is filled up quite quickly. So let us look at the options going from top to bottom. So what iCloud photo library does is any photos that you add to your photos app will automatically upload it, be uploaded to iCloud and made accessible to all other devices that have this option enabled. My photo stream imports recent photos from devices without iCloud photo library and sends them to new photos on your my photo stream to those devices. iCloud photo sharing allows you to share photos from one iCloud ID to another. It's a good way to quickly share photos. So for now, I'm going to be turning both these options off. Remember, you can make these changes at whatever time you want. Mail gives you the option of creating a new iCloud mail, which is separate from the ID that you use to log in. And it provides a basic mail account. If you want, you can turn this on. If you want, you can leave it off. So you choose your name here and it ends with the extension at the rate iCloud.com. I am allowing iCloud to manage my contacts, calendars, reminders, Safari, which includes this tabs that are open, bookmarks that are saved, things that I've marked for reading later, all those things. Notes allow my notes to go across. Find my Mac. Basically what Find my Mac does is that it allows me to physically locate my Mac on the map in the case that I have actually lost it or misplaced it. So using the Find My iPhone app on my, your iOS devices, you can actually physically locate your Mac and find it. You can even ac access that facility through the web interface that is iCloud.com. For the service to be able to physically locate your Mac, it is assumed that your Mac has network connectivity. If it doesn't, your requests will be queued up and made accessible to the device the minute it goes online and is reachable to the internet. So that's how you would set up iCloud on OS 10. You can even go ahead and manage your account details. Such as your name, contact, uh, security information, where you can change password or security questions. You can even set up two-factor authentication, which adds an extra layer of security. And it's something that I would strongly recommend. It gives you a list of devices where you have signed into iCloud. And payment information. In this case, my Apple ID and I, that is my iCloud ID is one without any payment details. So I cannot make any purchases. But if I had, I would see them here. Or if I wish, I can add payment details out here. I also have the option of setting up a family. In family sharing, I can take a group of Apple IDs, up to six, and combine them to form a single family. Wherein I've got one parent Apple ID, and other Apple IDs can 
take advantage of the items I purchase using my Apple ID. So if I purchase a song using the parent Apple ID, all the other family members will have access to those songs or movies or apps. So family sharing is not available at this time. If I wanted to, I can sign out from here. I can always change what is managed by iCloud at any time by clicking on these checkboxes accordingly. I didn't mention Keychain. Keychain allows my secrets which are saved on the phone to be synced with Keychain on iOS. Um, note that many of the passwords that you save on the computer will be shared over iCloud onto other devices signed in with the same iCloud ID. Uh, this is encrypted, but you should be aware of its implications. So that's how you would set up iCloud on OS X. Let us have a look at how to set up iCloud on an iOS device. Setting up iCloud on the iOS device is very easy. We set it up the same way we would on OS X. All that we have to do is go into the settings app, select the iCloud preference, sign in with the Apple ID and password that we have, and we have set up iCloud for the iOS device. And just like in system preferences on OS X, here within the settings app, you can manage which data is controlled by iCloud and you can change these settings at any point in time. Let us look at how we can set up iCloud on an iOS device. To do that, we'll open the settings app. Scroll down to iCloud. Sign in with the iCloud ID. So I've signed in to my Apple ID. As you can see, the interface is similar. It's just prompting me for the iCloud backup, so let's dismiss it. The interface is similar to system preferences within OS X. So from here, I can turn on what data will be managed by iCloud. I can see that contacts is managed by my iCloud, and we should see the same contacts we had seen earlier. So let's have a look. Yep, there you go. These were the contacts we had seen out there. So I can create a new contact again. Call it student demo. Demo. I can add a phone. Sit down. And this is a demo student contact that I've created, which is managed by iCloud. So from here, I can turn on iCloud Drive. Let's have a look at iCloud Drive. I can see the same documents which I had created there. So there was an update, I updated it. So there you go. The two documents I've created are now available. As you can see, it's pretty easy to set up iCloud on iOS. We've seen how to set up iCloud on OS X and iOS, both of which are operating systems from Apple. But the good news is you can also set up iCloud if you happen to have a Windows PC. To set up iCloud on Windows, we need a free software called as the iCloud Control Panel which you can download from the support pages for Apple. Using the control panel, we can set up our account and again, manage data and services that are accessible using iCloud. The same way we would do it with system preferences on OS X and the settings app in iOS. Let us look at how we can set up iCloud for Windows. I have downloaded iCloud Control Panel for Windows and installed it. Uh, this is running Windows 
So when I go to browse the apps that are available, I can see that there's a new Find My Phone, iCloud and iCloud Photos available out here. So a few new things that have come up. Let's go to iCloud. We get a similar interface that we got for OS X. So let us sign in. We are signing in. And there you go, you got iCloud set up. Uh, it's asking whether you want to send diagnostic information. I say don't send. And from here, I don't have the flexibility to control everything, but I can control many things. So my bookmarks are accessible in Chrome. I've got my photos and iCloud Drive available. So let's hit apply. There you go. If you want, you can download the bookmark extension. I don't need it right now. So I'll leave it there. Let's just explore the different applications. This is iCloud Drive. Folder should be empty right now. There you go. I have got my demo coming up. There's nothing in there. Of course, remember pages and keynote will not work here so your documents wouldn't come here unless of course you save them in the .docx format so those folders should not be accessible so that's how you'd set up iCloud on Windows now here's the last bit of it we have seen access to iCloud services on OS 10, iOS and Windows but the best part is you can access a lot of the data which is managed through iCloud from a web interface. This means all that you have to do is open up a browser, type in the URL www.icloud.com, sign in with your iCloud ID, and many of the things that are managed using iCloud will be accessible there. Take for example contacts. If you're managing contacts using iCloud on your iPhone, on your Windows computer, and your iPad, you would be able to access your contacts on iCloud.com also. This is very convenient, especially when you in the rare situation where you don't have access to a device, but you would still like to access the contents on the cloud. Let us see how we can access data through the web portal. And let us open Safari. And in the favorites, I already have a link for iCloud, so I'll click on that. The URL is www.icloud.com. This brings us to the page where we sign in with our Apple ID. So let us sign in. So we are signing in. It's prompting me to save this password. I say not now. And there you go. That's the web interface. So I can access my contacts, calendars, photos, iCloud Drive documents, notes, reminders, pages, numbers, keynote documents. I can even find friends using this. I can find my iPhone or an OS X device. The mail refers to the iCloud mail, which we can optionally set up. And this is the settings. So let's have a look at a few things. So let us look at We have student Amaranthan. We have student here. 
we also have contacts which are being managed under iCloud. Let's verify that. So yes, contacts are being managed by iCloud. So let's quit on co quit contacts and let us do one thing to test things. I'll go ahead and create a new contact. Student demo demo company mobile phone. iPhone work student at the rate demo.com. This is some fictitious data. That's the home page and notes. This is for demo like this. Created from the web portal. I will click done. So I have my student demo contact which I created through the iCloud web interface. If I open my contacts app now, these details should pop up here too. It might take some time depending on your internet connection. Now there you go. It's popped up. There you have it. Let's switch to calendar. So I have my calendar interface here. In fact, I'll just go back home and let's see how the reverse works. So I'll open up the calendar, say continue, and try and add a new event for tomorrow. So I'm going to talk on iCloud for Windows. I will see if it does work. I can give some other details here. I can see it's an all day event. I can add notes. This is a demo. If I want, I can add an attachment. I currently don't have any attachment. I'll just skip that. So this is the work calendar under iCloud. I have created an event on my Mac. Just to be sure, our calendars are also managed by iCloud. Let's minimize this. Let's minimize that. Let's open calendar. And there you go. I just created this event from OS X and it's now accessible on iCloud. I can even talk about location. I can make changes here. Save it. And then if I open the calendar back, again, depending on the internet, yeah, here you go. Location has come. As we can see, iCloud really allows us to easily make sure our data is accessible across everywhere. So we can go and check out iCloud Drive iCloud Drive works quite similar to the Dropbox folder concept where you can drop files in and again they're accessible everywhere. So if you're familiar with Dropbox, you should understand how this works too. I can create a folder here, call it demo. I can then go to iCloud Drive within Finder and it should pop up here. Any moment. There you go. So it all depends on internet. I can open up pages, continue. Let's create a document. I'll call this a let's take up a project proposal. For kicks, I'll say company name is demo company but by Version. 
head. I like to give myself the project head. And you know, I'm kind of done with this, so I just save it onto pages for iCloud. I'll call this demo one created on the 14th of September 2016. Save. I can now quit pages. And a couple of things should happen. On iCloud Drive, you can notice on my Mac, a new folder called Pages is created where I have my demo content. I don't know if you noticed there was a pie chart here indicating that contents were being pushed from my Mac onto the cloud. And as we're talking about it, you can see the Pages folder is created or made accessible on the web interface also, wherein I can go ahead and find the demo document. In fact, the same thing should also be accessible if I open the Pages app from out here. So there's a warning about the language. I can create another school report or I can just take a blank document and say choose. By the way, here's the document I opened up with the changes that I had made. So I'll just close this for now. Let me quit contacts in the meantime. This is a demo for creating a pages document from iCloud.com. Yeah, that's great. I feel that's something nice that I've done. I can add images if I wish. Or I can make some changes here. I can give this a different style, title, color, green. Hmm, this is not loading up clearly. I'm going for ultra light, center line. So I made some changes and I feel you know it looks good. So I can close the window now. And if I look at iCloud for pages, which we had accessed from here, the document I created on my Mac is available. So is the document that I have created here. I can click on blank and say change the name. So the changes have been saved. Let's come down here and you can see I have my demo waiting in my iCloud Drive's Pages folder. So iCloud Drive, Pages, I have the demo waiting. And that's iCloud on the web. One of the things that you can do from the web interface is restore any data that you might have been deleted accidentally. To restore the data, what you have to do is go to iCloud.com, sign in with your Apple ID, and then open the Settings web app. There, at the bottom of the screen, you should see options related to restoring data that you have deleted. So let us see how we can restore a deleted file from the web interface. For that, I will go to iCloud Drive. I'll select the file called demo, which we had created. I will click on delete. I get a pop-up stating, are you sure you want to delete demo.pages? This item will be immediately deleted from iCloud Drive and all your iCloud devices. This is harking back to the point I made earlier about not using iCloud as a backup service. Because what will happen is if you delete it from one device, that change will be pushed across all devices and will be deleted everywhere. So I go ahead and say delete. I can check whether the delete has worked by coming to iCloud Drive, Pages, and I see the file is no longer here. Okay, now I go to Settings. 
I scroll down at the bottom out here I can see there's something called as restore files I'll click on that and I can see that demo.pages was deleted I have a message here giving me the size and when it was deleted and how many days I have left before I can restore it so I've got 30 days left to restore it after which it will be permanently deleted if I'm sure that I don't want it I can select it and delete it from here but for now let us go ahead and restore it I'll click restore same done I will now move back to iCloud Drive and give it a few seconds to pop up here once again how long it takes to come, come back up depends on your internet connection as the changes will have to be push, pushed over the internet onto your devices ah there you go I have my demo coming back up I can even open finder on OS 10 go to iCloud Drive and check and see and there it is back here again this is how we would restore a document using the iCloud Drive web interface. We've looked at setting up iCloud on iOS, OS X and Windows. And we've seen how we can manage data using iCloud and make it available across multiple devices. However, there is one thing that is often missed out. What do you do when you sell your Apple device? It's very common for people to upgrade to the newest hardware as soon as it's available. And the common approach in this situation is to sell off the older device. But before you sell it off, there are certain things that one needs to do. And this also applies if the device is owned by an enterprise rather than an individual. The first thing that you need to do is make sure you sign out of iCloud from the iCloud settings within the settings app for iOS or from the iCloud preference pane within system preferences or the iCloud control panel on Windows. What this does is it turns off the activation lock which is turned on when you turn on find my Mac or find my iPhone. This is important because if you sell a device with the activation lock on it may prevent the new buyer from using the device because it is locked against an Apple ID to which he doesn't have access to. Once you signed out from iCloud, go ahead step by step and sign out from all the other accounts that you have. This could be email accounts, uh, calendar or contacts uh, accounts. Go ahead and uninstall apps from the App Store. Sign out of the App Store, which is something you might have done using the very same Apple ID. Remove any apps that you've purchased. Remove any songs, any photos that you may have had. And sign out of all other email or social media accounts that you have. Right in the end, as a good safety measure, go ahead and reset the device from the settings app by erasing all the contents and settings. This way you ensure that you give a clean device to the new buyer and none of your data is present on the device. Most importantly, you also ensure that the activation lock is now turned off. And the last important step is to go on to iCloud.com, sign in with the Apple ID that you used on the device which you're selling. Go to the settings pane and then delink the device. So you can do that by selecting the device you're about to sell and clicking on the cross next to the device to remove it. So this is a quick overview about iCloud and what it does. One of the biggest advantages is the fact that now a lot of the data which you earlier managed using iTunes is automatically distributed across devices using iCloud. It greatly reduces the complexity that was earlier present in pushing data from your computer onto your mobile device. In fact, nowadays, the only reason why I, for example, use iTunes is to sing songs that I've purchased from CDs on to my iOS device. For everything else, that is photos, contacts, calendars, emails, 
notes, reminders. I use the iCloud service. So that's iCloud. Thank you.